before we move on, I just want to touch back about your relationship with your family because I think that's super important and incredibly brave of you to come out about because I know that's really hard for a lot of people to talk about. So do you not have a relationship with your family anymore? And I how, do not. How do you manage that now? Like, are you okay with that? I have, I found peace with it. Mm-hmm. And I found peace with the understanding that for too many years, I carried the blame for getting into porn as the reason why my parents treated me horribly. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, my dad didn't speak to me from the time I was 16 years old till uh, he, I was 40 and he had a stroke and I came home. My neighbor had called me and said, your dad had a stroke and he was fine. But I came home. We connected for a couple of years. It was very awkward. It was weird. So when I wrote about this, when I walked into my dad's house, it was like I had died. He had every photo ever taken of me, like on this one wall, like a weird shrine. And then when you go to my mom's house, she wants to act like I'm dead because she doesn't want to associate with me because I'm a porn star. So there's no photos of me in her house. Mm -hmm. So it was like this weird, and the way that alone played on my emotions Mm -hmm. was heavy. And again, you don't realize it till it's not there, but I've made peace with the fact that they can never understand me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a small town mindset. They're, they're stuck on stupid with the fact that I'm a horrible person because I did porn. And anytime I wanted to address my abuse as a child, my mom would bring this up. Mm -hmm. And so what I've realized is after the first year, I felt healthier because I wasn't on a roller coaster ride. I wasn't on the, I'll give you an example. My grandfather died. And one of the reasons I got my apartment in New York city was because my grandfather and Peggy, Peggy, who you've heard about the most important person in my life. Mm -hmm. They were both in nursing homes and I could take the bus from East from New York to Easton and be right outside either of their nursing homes and then get a ride to the other one. And for the last three years, they were alive. I visited them a couple weekends a month. I would go either for the day or, or for the weekend, stay with my mom. And when my grandfather died, I had just been there like three days before. She lied to me by a week so that I didn't go to the funeral because they don't want to be seen accepting me because I'm in the industry at that time. And so they lied to me. And then I I was appalled. And what was crazy was the last visit I had with my grandfather, who had severe dementia. You know, when you're dealing with somebody with Alzheimer's or dementia, know this. They don't remember today. But if you bring in things from their past, they can tell you elaborate stories. Mm -hmm. And he was a World War II photographer. And I found boxes of his photos when I was helping my mom clean out their home to sell it because they were both in the nursing home. And I started taking in his war photos. And he would give me these stories. Like he would grab a photo. He's like, oh, that was 1943. We were in Germany. You see this guy right here. He'd tell me these great stories. And then one day, the last time I saw him, I had a shoebox of photos. And he looked at me. He goes, keep these because I think they're going to write you out of my will. And that was like our last conversation. Wow. And then she lied to me about having a service. Mm -hmm. And then I found out through a friend from home, like, hey, why didn't you go to your grandfather's funeral? And then I called my mom and she's like, well, we really didn't want to be seen with you. And we don't want to be seen that we accept you. You know, it's okay that you're here sometimes. Like she wouldn't eat out at a restaurant with me. She wouldn't let me go into the store with her. My life with them was at her house or at my dad's house. It wasn't in a public. Mm -hmm. So that's heavy. Yeah. And so after a year of not feeling that, I felt more comfortable in my skin. Mm-hmm. I felt more confident about myself. Mm-hmm. I was around more people that had positive interactions with me than constantly reminding me mm-hmm. of these horrible choices that I made. Mm-hmm. And that last visit home, I was kind of done. Um, and that was why I decided to have this like come to Jesus. Like, listen, I called it Russian roulette in my book. I said, I want to sit down and have a conversation. And I called the person who abused me and had him on the phone. And I said, everybody needs to get together. I just want to sit down. I just want you to know how this affected my life. I've already forgiven you. It's already been years. But you have to have a face-to-face me understand what this did to me. And that was it. My whole family got together and said, we're never talking to her again. Wow. And that, And they have not, during the pandemic, didn't reach out. Don't know if they know where I live. But I've reconnected with all of my friends from my hometown. And during the pandemic, I would rent a car and drive home and see my friends from Easton Mm -hmm. uh, because it was supposed to be our 30-year high school reunion and we didn't get to have it. But I'm at peace with it because I feel better about myself not trying to prove myself to a family that doesn't accept me and will never accept me. And also, I remind them of bad things. Mm -hmm. I remind them that they failed me. Mm -hmm. I remind them that 
I've gone out on my own and been successful without their help. I think my parents would have much rather me be a girl in the business who became addicted to drugs and was living under a bridge somewhere. Mm -hmm. They don't want me to be successful. Yeah. When I was on Sirius, every time there was a free membership, I would email both my parents. Hey, there's free. You can listen to my radio shows. Every time I'd go home, have you listened to my show? Oh no, we haven't. I realized like, you're more embarrassed of my past than you'll ever be proud of my future. Mm -hmm. And so you're never going to support my new way of life. You're never going to support me. Yeah. So I feel ultimately better. It's sad. Um, My friend who you met today always says, I still put hope in my hope bucket that your mom reaches out because it breaks my heart that a mom doesn't talk to her daughter. I'm like, but your mom loves me and treats me better than my mom ever treated me. So Mm -hmm. why would I want to go back to that? Do you think that we as a society put like too much emphasis on family? I do. You because know? if it doesn't work, don't force it. That's the Find thing. your it's- friends that love you and be around them. Yeah. Cause we always, I mean, we, we always talk about family. Family is so important. Um, you know, love your family, all these movies about reconnecting with your family. And I don't know, it's hard for me to imagine because from my perspective, course, as you know, course. like my family, we're all really close and I'm super fortunate in that way. Yeah, you are. So I can't imagine like being disconnected from them, but coming from somebody who struggles with their relationship with their family, like, is that a healthy narrative for us to push to be like, no, you have to heal. You have to like make your relationship with your family work. If like, it's just not there. If it's toxic, if it brings back old memories that are painful, if there was abuse that you can't get past and if it's meant to be, let the dust settle, but don't force it. And I, you know, in sports radio, I would always ask people around the holidays to stop saying on air, enjoy the holidays with your family. I would always ask them to say your loved ones. Mm -hmm. So I would like text to producers, like, can you remind so-and-so not to say this? Because there's a lot of people that don't have a great family. And that's why people get incredibly depressed depressed during the holidays. holidays. So to make every card say family or everything say family, just say loved ones. We can choose where that love goes. Is it going to your family or is it going to your chosen family? Mm -hmm. But it's okay to be estranged, estranged from your family if it's not a healthy relationship. And I'm healthier mentally in so many ways now that I'm not forcing that relationship to happen anymore. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted it so badly. And looking back now, it had to go through the cycles that it went through because once Peggy passed away and once my grandfather passed away, Going home was dark. I had nobody that I was excited to see. Um, I knew my mom was going to make me feel like shit. I knew my dad was going to be like sitting like across the table from a distant stranger who was going to like tell me who died, tell me who was sick, um, tell me the gossip in our family and never ask about me. Uh, Never want to know my dad. Never visited me anywhere I ever lived. Never knew where I lived. And that's just like... That's a one-way relationship. I'm coming to you, but as a father, you don't want to see where your daughters lived. I remember before I got married, he and I weren't talking. And my mom insisted that he meet my husband before I get married. And we pulled up out front of his house. He was cutting the lawn. And we walked up, and he shook Mike's hand, and he didn't look at me once. And he introduced himself. They talked. My mom did her thing. He acted like I wasn't even present. We got back in the car and my husband, of course, was like shocked. He was like, my God, he acted like you didn't even exist. And I'm like, I don't exist to him. So that was a very common thread through my life. And I continued, Holly, continued. It was like the one thing I couldn't check off my list. It was like the one obsession I had Mm -hmm. that I couldn't correct. The one thing I couldn't do better. The one thing, that one thing and letting it go has been really healthy for me. Yeah. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's part of who I am. Yeah. And if my story helps other people understand that that doesn't define me, Mm -hmm. their lack of understanding or our lack of love, it it doesn't mean I can't get love elsewhere. It doesn't mean I'm not deserving or worthy of love. It doesn't mean that I shouldn't share myself with other people. It just means that's not going to work. Right. And I think that that's a message that so many people um, will resonate with so many people. I mean, you know, I know so many people in the adult industry who are estranged from their family and have volatile relationships with their family and them being in the adult industry has just made it worse. And that constant, like trying to prove themselves, trying to repair that maybe, yeah, maybe all of that effort in the end isn't 
that worth it? No, because you could have all that time. I could have been with people that love me for me. Yeah. Like my friends, I've been telling you about the relationships that have become so yeah. valuable to my life. I discounted them while trying to fix this. And really they love me unconditionally. Right. They were there for me, but we all want the love of our parents. Yeah. That's just a natural, normal thing, but not everything works. And it's really something in the industry because most parents, it's so great when I meet somebody like Joanna, I love that her parents are supportive of her mm -hmm. and it makes me so happy for her. Like when I meet a girl that tells me my parents are fine with what I do as long as I'm good with my money, I'm always like, oh my, yes, to your parents. <laughs> like, yes, yeah. I love them and I'm so happy there's some of you out there. There's a great, so Alina Lopez, you know her? No. She's amazing. So she comes from a Mormon family okay. and her family is still Mormon and they fully support her. Her mom made her ABN dress for her. They go to the awards with her. Like love. they are a very Mormon, very religious family and they embrace and love Alina. Good for her. For, and like that to me is so powerful because so often you hear about these religious families that reject their child who's an adult. And like Alina is just a wonderful example oh. of like that's not always the case. It's not always the case. Yeah. It's so great for her. And it's such so great for her parents too, yeah. because it's, it's important. But for people out there who don't have that, instead of trying to fix something that's broken, sometimes it's just go with the safe bet mm -hmm. and go with those friendships that do love you. Go to those places. Like I'll say, your mom made me feel more comfortable in my skin in my young years in the industry than anyone because she was a woman, because she was successful, because she wasn't like everybody else was in this whole gossipy thing. She never gossiped. She didn't give a fuck about what anybody else was doing. Mm -hmm. So being on her set was like actually working and doing really cool things. Mm -hmm. Whereas being on everybody else's set just made me feel so intertwined in the business and who liked who and who didn't like who it just wasn't her thing. Mm -hmm. But I saw her as a successful woman and I was like, I can be a successful woman because of her. Like she is, she doesn't care what people think about her. She goes to the store. She's fine. She's saving her money. Look where she lives. Like, look what she's done. Like that was a lot of hope for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, one thing that you can say, my mom, is she definitely doesn't care what people no. think about her. And she's afraid of nobody. Nobody. <laughs> and I remember telling her how devastated I was that everybody didn't like me when I retired and how things blew up in my face. She's like, what do you want to do? She goes, there's nothing worse than hanging out with a bunch of pornographers. You're very boring. They're, they're so boring. And she, and then she walked away. Like I'm, I'm pouring my heart out at how upset I am. And she just so put this like stamp on it. Like it didn't matter. And right away I was like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because she said that. I was like, you know what? She's right. She'd been right my whole career before. Why am I pining on this? But yeah. she made it just like, matter of fact, like, please. <laughs> hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.